Hey guys, this is Andrew with HKN, and today we're going to be talking about MRE uh, signal space efficiency. And specifically, we're going to present a problem and solve it in its entirety, and we're going to figure out which one of two signal space constellations is more power efficient. So, the problem is that we have five signals we want to send, and we're given two ways that we can send it. And we want to compare the power to bit error rate efficiency to see which one we should use. The first signal set is actually just written out in terms of a bunch of different signals. So we have a signal one, and it's one for two seconds. Signal two is it's one for one second, and then negative one for the second second. One negative one. Wildly not to scale, but you get the point. Then the third signal, and so this is like a case where we have um, maybe five different options for things we want to send. And so here these are representing the five different uh, code words or whatever you want to call them. Uh, bits of information that we would like to send. This is signal three. And these are all functions of time, obviously. The fourth signal is negative two for all time. So I guess I probably should just come up here. And so these are given to you. And what we're going to do is we're going to plot them all into signal space. So we have here, uh, it's negative one for the two seconds. And then signal five, we've run out of uh, just combinations of ways to do this. Signal five is just declared to be negative two for one second as a function of time. So this is our first signal set. So this is signal set one. The second signal set that we could possibly use, call it uh, signal set two. Signal set two. So this is just another set of signals that we could possibly use. And we're going to compare the efficiency of this set of signals with the efficiency of another set of signals. Um, it's SI of t. So the ith signal is equal to a cosine of 2 pi fc t, where fc is the carrier frequency of the wave. And the angle is. 2i minus 1 pi divided by 5. And I guess I should make that let's see, bigger to match the other one. Um, you're also given that i goes from 1 to 5, obviously. And fc is equal to 1 kilohertz. So the question here is that we have we can send signals this way, and we or we can send signals this way. Which one should we do to get the best performance for the same amount of power, or vice versa? Um, so what we first have to do is we first have to plot these into signal space so that we can see what they look like. So we're going to do that very quickly. Um, this one we need to find a basis set for. So if you don't know how signal space works, we have another video on it. Um, you can uh, we could put it in the description, or I'm sure it'll be in a sidebar here somewhere. Um, but we need to find a basis function for signal set one. So uh, just by inspection, we can find uh, phi one one and phi one two. Uh, and these have to be uh, functions of time, obviously. And so these are functions that will make up these guys and also have unit energy. 
So phi one one will be for one second a box car and it will have height C. And the reason that we say it has height C and not one or something like that is because we need to normalize the energy. Um, it has to have unit energy in order to be a basis function. So we will solve for what that is in a second. But the second basis function is going to go from 1 to 2 and is also going to be of height C because uh, this guy's energy will be the same as this guy's energy. So if we find C for one of them, we should find C for the other one. And obviously this is time and this is phi 1, 1 and this is phi 1, 2. So we need to find out what this C is. And in order for that, the definition for a basis set is that the dot product of a function um, with itself has to be 1, and the dot product of a basis function with another one has to be 0. So these are orthonormal bases. Um, so this has to equal to 1. And obviously the support for phi 1, 1 is from 0 to 1. So this is a fairly easy integral to take. We just get 0 to 1 of c squared dt. And if you this has to equal to 1, so we get uh, c squared uh, 1 t, so you have to evaluate from 0 to 1, uh, has to equal to 1. So that means that c squared has to equal to 1, so c has to be 1. Fairly nice. So here this c is 1 here as well. So now both of these functions, both of our basis sets, have unit energy. Basically, energy is also the, uh, the integral of the entire function, the magnitude squared, or I guess uh, you don't need to take a magnitude because uh, when you're squaring it. But it, uh, if you take the integral of the magnitude squared across the entirety of the function, you get the energy uh, in volts squared. Um, so uh, we have a basis function for the signal set 1. So we're going to plot the signal space for signal set 1. So in order to make up this first function, S1, the vector form of it, because we're putting into signal space now, um, it's fairly easy to see that it is just phi 1, 1 plus phi 1, 2. So it would be 1, 1. So if you add these two functions together, you get signal 1. Signal 2 is going to be phi 1, 1 plus a negative phi 1, 2. So we should get 1, negative 1. S3 is going to be negative 1, 1. I hope you kind of see what we're doing here. Um, I'll just finish off the rest of these for you. Uh, S4 here is going to be just negative 1, negative 1. And S5 is going to equal to negative 2, 0. Because there's no contribution from the, first, from the second second into uh, S5. And so this is a vector. So we can now plot these into signal space. So if this is uh, 1, this being negative 1, uh, sorry for the bad spacing, uh, negative 2, we have negative 1, and we have 1. So plotting these into signal space, we have 1, 1. We have 1, negative 1. Making sure that these are all correct. Um, we have that, we have one neg uh, negative 1, 1, and we have negative 1, negative 1, and then we have negative 2, 0. So those are all of our signals, and while we're at it, we should plot the decision regions. And so basically what that means is if we get a received signal and plot it in here, uh, depending on which region it is, it'll be closest to a, uh, any single one of these. So what we do is we draw lines that connect all of the signals to their nearest neighbors. 
So we have these. And the decision regions will bisect these lines. So specifically, we have a decision region that is coinciding with these axes. And then we have a decision region which will bisect this line and bisect this line. And so now we've split this region up into five. So if, for instance, I have a received signal over here, right about here, it'll map to this function because that is the one in within this region. And so usually decision regions are marked with omegas. So we have decision region one. Uh, we should have decision region two. Deci decision region three is up here. Decision region four is here. And decision region five is in here. So, this is signal space one. Sorry, that should be first signal space. All right, so now we need to think about the other signal set. And the other signal set. Uh, is actually, so it's not drawn out signals like this, so you might think it would be uh, a little bit more difficult, especially because you have a sine and a cosine, uh, or a cosine depending on uh, the angle there. Um, you might think it might be harder to find uh, a basis set. But actually, just looking at this, we should be able to tell that this is the form of a PSK system. PSK being phase shift keying, and what that means is that the signals are all pretty much the same, but we are going to be, uh, but the, they're offset by uh, their phase. As you can see here, this is the common frequency. And then this is the second part there that's changing with I is the phase. And specifically, that phase splits up the whole 360 degrees of phase into five parts five equal parts. So, the, if we know that this is five PSK, we can work off of this to find the signal space and some other stuff very, very quickly. So, the, in order to find the uh, signal space, uh, we're not going to have as nice well-defined dimensions here because we have this constant A out front, so we don't know the exact energy of this signal, uh, but we can still plot the, the signal space relatively. So we have this space here, and how PSK works is they, uh, the signals are spread along a circle centered at the origin. Best shot I got at a circle. Um, and they're spread at equal intervals. And so you see here it's at pi over 5. So we'll start with i equals 1 and go up to i equals 5. So if i equals 1, the angle here is uh, 2 minus 1 pi over 5. So that's just pi over 5. Um, so that gives us at an angle of pi over 5, pi over 5 being 72 degrees. Uh, which is somewhere about here. So the next one would be 144 degrees. And so that one is going to be somewhere um, about here. The next one is going to be on the axis. The next one is going to be a bit closer down here. And the last one is going to be here. This one should actually be down a little bit further. So we've plotted our PSK by separating them by angles of pi over 5. We're going to just redraw that very quickly because I've done a horrible job. All right, so this guy should go here, and this guy should go here. And they should all be on the circle. 
And now to the, draw the decision regions. The decision regions look like this. And so what you'll see is they kind of intersect a pentagon. So if I was to draw a regular pentagon centered at the origin, these lines would bisect that pentagon. And so this is decision region one. This is decision region two. Decision region three. Decision region four. And decision region five. So these signals were plotted by knowing that this was a PSK system by the form of the signal. We don't have any uh, scaling for this axis right now because we don't know what A is. Um, but in principle, it won't really matter too much. Um, and this angle here is actually the angle that they are placed on a circle centered at the origin. So we just plotted them at those intervals and found the, uh, found the decision regions for those. They actually, uh, if you just connected them and found the regular pentagon by connecting all of them, something like this, uh, I'll do it with the yellow marker. So we have something like that, something like that, something like that, and that, and that. The green decision regions bisect those lines.